Okay, Ma many things to say, of course. So you have two, um, two different takes on that. You have the, the point of view of the startups, the, what we call the private markets. Um, there, the notion is that there are companies who have cash, they've raised recently, and those who haven't. And the first ones are in a better situation. And the partners, the funds, are in a situation where it's not a very active market, they can't really raise more. So this, this is a strain that is put on startups. What it means is that the, the message towards um, the, yeah, the companies is uh, have more credibility in demonstrating, maybe not profitability, but a clearer path towards uh, profitability. And um, I would say, yeah, uh, a level of maturity that is coming you know, sooner than, than the previous message, which was all about growth. So growth is, of course, still very important, we hope, but it's not alone, and, and the messages change a lot. From the point of view of the markets themselves, the public markets, as we call them, there you have many, many things. It's quite difficult to actually completely understand what's going on. There's been a lot of rotation. Um, I was told this is a, a rally in a beer market. What does it mean? It means that you know, we had a record of in the CAC 40, uh, mid-February, historic uh, record, one year after the previous record, which is just before the, U Ukraine, the, the war in Ukraine. So why is that? Um, it happened with low volumes, so you're not sure it's super stable. It was more driven by, I would say, uh, some elements of, uh, of speculations, hedge funds, a lot of rotation between different, uh, different positions. What is, what we are looking at is the market is looking a little bit, what is the new, um, the new normal? When will the monetary policy uh, uh, normalize? Uh, and of course, there's been a, a flow of news, and the most recent one are all the, uh, the news flow in the bank sector. Um, but my takeaway with that is that from the startup's point of view to the public markets, we now are aligned in the type of message that we give to companies there and here, which is uh, be, um, be prepared for profitability and look a little bit at that. So we have, before that, it was a bit two different discourse, two different planets. Now we know we have the same message. Uh, keep growing, yes. Um, profitability matters. That's that's a that's a key message. It's um, coming back again to the basics. A company is there to to make profit and to to uh, to, to grow profitably. Um, I would nuance it though a little. Uh, certainly, public markets. If you're not profitable, you're going to have a rough time for quite quite some while. Uh, but private markets, of course. Um, if you're able to demonstrate progress on, on your key metrics, um, that's, that's, that's critical, right? So um, loss-making companies will continue to be financed, but you need to show a better path, to demonstrate the path, uh, document the path towards, uh, towards profitability and show that you have that mindset. I think that in the context that are difficult like that, it's key to focus on what really matters and uh, right now, in, in for instance, at Maps, we are really working on our North Star metrics, uh, coming back to OKRs, trying to really um, scheme everything that's not going, uh, uh, everything that's not critical to our mission and our goal. And uh, yeah, it's a kind of uh, advice I would love, like to, to have. So I, I could nuance, nuance and say that we do have non-profitable uh, companies listed, but they have to demonstrate, you know, materially when that will come and how. But coming back on your question, so basically, if you're talking about exit, you have exit for the funders and exit for the investors. So basically, three scenarios you can you can say in the private markets if you either through your profits. If you don't have any, then it's a kind of question of you know, can you go evergreen? And we've seen, uh, I was looking for the translation of the mystigri and I couldn't find it, but it means that you, you, you're doing secondary and secondary. So I think the private markets now, the, the message they give us is that they have to demonstrate the capacity to exit. So they can exit to someone else in, in the space or they can exit to something else. And the two basic options usually are M&A and uh, an IPO. M&A, um, it's fine, it will, you know, uh, 
uh, create a bigger champion. But for a company who wanted to be a, you know, a leader, to have its own destiny, maybe it's not the first choice. And so you're left with um, the great choice, which is continue to, to have your own destiny, your strategic independence by going listed. And of course, then you have to be ready and you have to have the market ready. And that's probably the next uh, discussion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, in our context, we decided to to uh, join Lumaps because we could see that it created an overall added value. It's as the sum of the two uh, was creating extra value for our, our common customers, etc. So, yeah, m and I think it's, there are going to be a lot of operations in the in the coming month. Uh, so, so IPO remains the uh, royal exit, right? That's what every tech entrepreneur probably wants, dreams of, and, and wants to achieve. And it's great that we continue to maintain that, that target. And the markets will, will reopen up. Um, uh, we know that there's a there's a accumulated pipeline of fantastic companies that are ripe for public markets. Public markets are just hesitant at the moment. So it will come back. Um, I predict 24, 24 will be will be a great year for for IPOs. Um, probably profitable large companies first, but as we know, uh, that that will reopen up over time. But on on the private markets, I think uh, a lot more options have opened up. So uh, the private market has become a lot more liquid. Uh, there are lots of different options uh, opening up for for companies and entrepreneurs. Um, uh, you know, uh, one investor passing the buck over to the next. Um, but at, at heart, it's the same process. So you, you do need to be exit ready. And interestingly, the, the characteristics, whether you exit towards private equity or you private to public markets, are to a large extent the same, right? You need us to demonstrate uh, to tick the boxes of private equity and tick the boxes of, of public markets. Resilience, um, being being uh, 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 su sufficient scale, being uh, having a resilient management, ex a, a certain level of um, <coughs> a, a culture of profitability. Um, and, 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 and once you achieve these, these aspects, I think a lot of, lot of options open up. Uh, secondary, I mean, it's not the end of the life of the company when one investor exits and, and a new investor comes in. It's usually um, uh, brings a lot of new blood, a lot of new energy, new perspective on businesses. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting question. I have been talking about that with uh, many founders. I think the key point is that it's not a short-term one-shot thing. It's like when you want to raise fund. If you want to raise fund and you need fund and you're just calling all the investors, they don't, they never heard about you, so they are reluctant. It will take time to build a relationship, uh, some trust. So it's exactly the same with an exit, I believe. You need to start early on, if it's part of your possible uh, options, uh, to build a relationship with your ecosystem, with potential partners who could which could acquire you, or uh, just companies that could in just be interested in, in what you're doing. So I think the first key point is to start as early as possible building relationship with uh, possible uh, companies that could acquire you, for instance. In my case, I had a quarterly uh, like checkup with uh, many uh, uh, M&A and strategy uh, VPs in companies that could be possible at Keros. So I think there is a key point, like starting as early as possible. Uh, the second point, and I think it applies also that to companies that don't really think about an exit, is to uh, build a clean company in terms of code, in terms of finances, and in terms of law, legal. Uh, because uh, when you uh, are in the process of an exit, uh, you have to open uh, the trunk and uh, they're going to see uh, not only the nice part you're pitching in uh, newspapers and uh, on uh, startup affairs, they're also going to look at your accounting, uh, all your the structure of all your deals with your customers. Are there 
legal risk, etc. So my second point would be don't be cheap on legal, don't be cheap on accounting, document your code and make sure that if uh, there is a conversation happening, you're dead ready. <laughs> So yeah, no, it's it's fair to say that we we are in competition with with the U.S. for the tech scene, and there are many arguments why uh, you should choose Europe and Euronext in particular. You have defensive ones that will tell you, and I think it's very important that people are aware of that, that it's more expensive, and it's sometimes dangerous or legally more challenging uh, to choose the IPO path in the U.S. because you have a lot of you have an environment that is different, and you know, honestly, not your world, uh, a lot of risk in terms of uh, legal action, et cetera, and, and a lot of costs going on. So people will, will, will usually compare their situation and what they know best in Europe with the fairy tales in the US, and they will know all about more complicated stories at home. That's, you know, a cognitive uh, bias, it's like that. But I have a more, uh, uh, I would like my pitch to be much more positive. In, in Europe, we've built, uh, a very big pool of liquidity uh, that is uh, channeling that to our markets and it associates the, the, the big uh, asset managers, the, the American ones, are present on our markets. They're here. They're looking at the companies and they're ready to invest. And we have like 30% of our tech leaders company in Euronex who are funded by uh, the big names of the US which are as present here as they are there. Plus you have your, your home scene. And this is what we want to build. Um, to try to be realistic and optimistic about uh, about the current markets, and you have some more specific aspects. There is even an argument that is a bit tricky, but says that you have an element of rarity in the, in, in, in the in the French and European markets about tech that makes you actually more desirable and more visible. If you look, for instance, at indices, if you want to be in the Nasdaq 100, you know you never say the, the name of your your, uh, op your your competitors, but you know I've, I've done it so. You have to be 12 billion capitalis capitalized, so good luck for you to access that quickly. If you come to our markets, we have this big liquidity, we have several indices, and you can, you can be there earlier. So you can join your next tech leader, you will have special homemade visibility, um, benefiting from the support of the French tech, for instance, in, in France, that, that also concerns listed companies and our, our own uh, endeavor. Plus, you know, being in the index, for instance, OVH, uh, Cloud joined the SBF uh, 120 I initially, very soon after they appealed, and that that is something that has a lot of value. Yeah, you want peers and, and you want the right peers, but you, you you want to be the big guy here rather than a zombie there. So of course, then you know if you're. No, no, but I mean, if you if you are a success, it will be a success. You know, so this is all about together having the success project coming to the success market, and we need both of us. Uh, so I, I'm a big believer that the European uh, public markets are, are finally emerging as a, as a true alternative to, to the US. I think there's been a, a lot of maturity coming, uh, both on the investor side, so the, the uh, Institutional investors, public investors have been have been maturing better, have getting a better understanding of tech, as tech has also become more prevalent at in in the economy in general, but also in their in their own ecosystems, right? In the in the, in the banking and intermediation ecosystems have been uh, very strongly impacted by tech, and that ha that has that's having reper repercussions, and I think uh, will will lead to you know to strong European. Uh, I don't think I, I have much to add. Uh, everything has been said, but yeah, I'm a big believer in of the French tech, and I think we have uh, amazing talents, engineers uh, in France. At Trimaps, we have we are building our product. All of our product teams are in France, and uh, yeah, big believer of the, of the French tech.